Thank you for joining me on another video of Being Intentional, the series of videos named after my book by the same name, which explores the ways and means through which we can better control specific moments in our life and by association exert better control over our life as a whole and achieve better outcomes in the actions and decisions that we actually make. Today's topic, like most topics, has been called from a number of emails that you have sent in over the last few weeks. Please keep those coming. They're really useful as they showed me what is really important to you as you work your way through the book itself, as you begin to think about some of the things which challenge you. And then it allows me to create content that better answers your questions. So today we're going to talk about how we respond to a situation that has triggered us so that we have a strong emotional reaction to what is happening. I'm sure most of you are familiar with situations like that on social media, but we get situations like that at home and at work, and usually, you know, we can even get them in the street perhaps, in a totally foreign environment where we have been totally unprepared, and that's when it usually blindsides us. Luckily, there are things you can do, there are very specific strategies we can employ that will allow us to control our emotions, to regulate them, not suppress them, so that we basically have better responses and achieve better outcomes. In order to demonstrate this easily, I'm going to use an inflated example and I'm going to take it to extremes so to give you an idea of how things progress if we don't check what is happening. And the paradox here is that things can get out of hand even though perhaps we haven't subverted the logic of the situation and everything appears to be very logical. Now, imagine, if you will, that you are having a discussion with your best friend and you're discussing something which is very dear to both your hearts and at some point in that discussion you reach a disagreement and one of you, feeling triggered, feeling emotionally involved, raises the tone of voice just a little bit. Now, what happens then is that you process that signal more than you process the logicality of the argument itself and you respond to that with an emotional trigger, an emotional response of your own. That usually tends to escalate the situation so that you end up raising a tone of voice incrementally, each one trying to uh, shout louder than the other. And as you feel that you're not being listened to, as you feel that the other person is sort of attacking you, then you respond in kind. And all these things are logical in their way, the way we process them. So before too long, there you are rolling around on the floor, grappling with your best friend, uh, trying to win the situation by overcoming them physically in this particular case. Like I said, I'm inflating the example here, but you can see how this can happen. I'm sure you have experienced similar situations in social media. I'm sure you have seen some of those situations in real life in the street when you are totally unprepared. And also perhaps you have experienced something similar in a home environment with friends or family where things got out of hand. To go back to my example now with your friend, how is it going to end up? Well, it's going to end up with at least one of you being hurt, maybe, or both of you being hurt, or both of you ending up in prison because, you know, uh, breach of the peace and causing sort of a public nuisance or bodily harm or whatever. And then that's when you begin to cool down and question your own judgment. Now, here's what it is. The more strongly we believe something, the more strongly we are tied to it, the closer it feels to our own sense of identity and um, the reflection of our core values, the stronger the emotional response that we're going to experience. What blindsides us is the fact that our emotions flare up so quickly that our next logical step, the fallacy of the next logical step, is to escalate the situation hoping to, within inverted commas, win that particular conflict. Now, obviously, it's going to lead to a situation or an outcome that is not going to be good for us. Whenever we lose control of our emotions, it's never really a very good outcome in any way, shape or form. But you're listening to this in order to understand how to manage this better. And for this, there is actually a strategy. To go back to the example of you arguing with your best friend, 
that ended up in both of you grappling around on the floor, trying to win the argument. You have to ask yourself, in that context, what is most important to you? Is your friendship with that person the most important thing? Or is winning the argument the most important thing? If you say winning the argument, then what happened is perfectly understandable and perhaps excusable, but it will result in you losing the friendship of that person and perhaps also um, losing uh, confidence in your own ability to make judgments and respond accordingly to situations that challenge you. But if you say that the most important thing to you is your friendship with that person, your relationship with your best friend, then you would take a different approach, you would get less triggered, you would be able to control your emotional flare-up a lot better, and by doing so, you would perhaps communicate better because you would listen to them a little bit more, you would be able to ask if they raise their voice first, what was it that made them feel so passionate about this, and you would try to understand them. And even if you end up disagreeing, you would do so in a more agreeable way, in a more agreeable manner, and that in itself would be a win, because it would show perhaps greater maturity from both your parts, but also it would show to you that you can control um, situations that tend to trigger your emotions and uh, challenge the way that you are able to respond. If you want to put this in a business environment, we're talking here about tactics and strategy. Tactics are always operational. Strategy, however, has a long-term view that is governed by the values of the business, by its aims and its mission statement, and that allows it to basically decide whether some tactics are worth it or not. Put this in a personal situation, it's about your personal values and your behavior and your actions and the consequences it actually has. Now, here's the thing which most people miss. In order for you to actually deal with this personally, you have to be able to actually feel your values as opposed to just knowing them. In the example that I use, for instance, you have to be able to actually feel the value of the continued relationship with your friend, as opposed to just thinking, oh yeah, he's my friend or she's my friend, and you know, I can't just wreck that relationship over an argument. Thinking takes a long time to actually happen, to process it differently, whereas emotional triggers, emotional responses are a lot faster and have a stronger bio-neurochemical signal. So basically, if you don't really feel that that friend is worth keeping, you are unlikely to be able to control yourself and the situation, and you're most likely to escalate things and perhaps wreck the relationship. This is why it is so important when it comes to values, to actually feel them, to understand what they truly mean to us, as opposed to just agreeing with them and paying lip service to the notion that they represent and then ending up doing nothing about them when it actually matters. So if you really truly want to know how to regulate your emotions when things trigger you, you need to ask yourself, what is it that truly matters to you? Ask yourself why, what does it actually matter? You need to understand that in order to feel it. And if you manage to do that, then you will have your own red lines that kick in the moment that you feel triggered and then they define your behavior much better than the logic of the situation actually would. As always, I hope this helps. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out the description box below for more links to articles and um, studies that actually support what I'm covering here. And don't forget to leave your comments. Thank you so much for being part of this journey. Stay safe out there. Take care.